I feel like hormones are like the topic of conversation right now. They really are, which they should be. This isn't a trend. Once you learn about it, like this is gonna stick. You can be eating the perfect diet, exercising the perfect amount. And when our body doesn't feel safe or grounded, all it's doing is putting all its work into trying to just keep your body running. Mm. Nutrition wise is more protein at every meal, especially, especially breakfast. Your cortisol is highest in the morning. Morning sun, so important. Love that you said that. When you do get takeout food, you know, especially if it's warm and it's put in plastic, some of the plastic can be seeping into your food. Super high levels of BPA and plastics in my blood and urine test when I did it. And that was one of the reasons that my estrogen was so messed up. <gasps> yeah. Our body is living kind of in this fight or flight, but it doesn't know because it thinks we're experiencing what we're watching, but we need more disconnection from that in order for our body to be grounded and safe. You know how you're supposed to feel. We're not looking for perfect. We're looking for better. Okay, guys, today on the show, I am so excited to have Paige Lindgren. She's a certified hormone specialist and a certified Matt Pilates instructor who's passionate about helping women feel their best and find balance. You may have seen her on your TikTok for you page sharing single, single, sharing cycle syncing tips hormone healthy recipes and workouts we can do during different phases of our cycle. I'm so excited to have a hormone specialist on the show today. I've been on my own journey to healing my hormones. And whenever I share on Instagram, you guys relate and have a million questions. So Paige, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Everyone was so pumped when I said you were coming on. I was so pumped when you told me I was coming on. <laughs> well, I feel like hormones are like the topic of conversation right now. They really are. Which they should be. It's the most exciting thing that like this isn't a trend. Once you learn about it, like this is going to stick. So the fact that it feels like it's kind of a trend right now, like, okay, feel good. And like, this is going to last. Yeah. You're Everywhere, thriving though. right now. So I happy. <laughs> Where did your initial interest in hormones begin? Like, what's your story? Yeah, my own little health journey. I have Hashimoto's disease. It's an autoimmune thing. Got diagnosed when I was nine, like young. So kind of my whole life been struggling with the autoimmune stuff. And then once I got my period, it started affecting my hormones. And weren't really putting the pieces together as to what was making me feel bad. I'm like, I'm medicated for my autoimmune disease. Like everything's fine. Like I shouldn't be feeling this way. Weren't looking at my hormones. Years, 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 years go by. Skip a lot of stories. Um, we test my hormones and we're like, you have none. Your hormones are so low. No wonder you feel bad. And then once I started working on that naturally, and I felt like a person I've never felt in my life. I'm like, this is just like the missing piece that no one's talking about. I feel like this is, everyone can relate to this and there's no way that everyone's hormones are balanced. Yeah. So then I started learning about it. How did you initially know you had Hashimoto's? Like what are the symptoms? For me personally, I got lucky because my whole family has it. So my sister, two years older than me, had a big lump on her throat and her doctor's like, go get tested. Like, what is that? Awful levels, Hashimoto's. So then they're like, you might as well get tested. Mine was like off the rail as well, but luckily we caught it early. But the main symptoms is like such extreme fatigue, um, weight fluctuations, slow metabolism, bad digestion issues, slow digestion, mood th like wow like such a a list that could go on for a very long time so that can show up as early as age nine mm -hmm. yeah wow okay interesting but i've never honestly met i've met one person who was diagnosed really young maybe they're just not testing people that young but mm. yeah you definitely can be affected that young if you want to get tested what kind of test would you go in and ask for for hashimoto's you any doctor can run it it's the most basic test but you want t3 t4 and then this is something not all doctors will run but you want to get your reverse t3 tested basically shows how you're absorb like you need all three of those most conventional doctors are just testing t3 t4 do also reverse T3. Just ask your doctor. Does you know? the T stand for thyroid? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't know though. Okay, but that's useful because I've heard a lot of people question whether they have it or not. It's I think it's a question for a lot of people in their minds. I Yeah, I think the other thing that like, I haven't talked about much, but 
blood tests aren't always like the like you have it or you don't like it can be helpful but they're testing people with imbalances it's not like that's like what the base level is they're comparing it to people who have messed up levels Mm. you can have symptoms and be struggling even if like your levels are showing up oh okay so it can kind of also get tricky there 100 percent. i was someone who thought blood tests were the be all end all Mm -hmm. and then i recently found out that that's not the case so i did the dutch test okay which is basically you take samples of spit and urine all day long at various hours of the day yeah and that was able to show me such specific details on my hormones and even my cortisol it was incredible did you like kind of compare it to your blood work and did it kind of show different things or still waiting on the up-to-date blood work okay but it was way more specific in terms of my like estrogen and testosterone levels so i have low low estrogen and high testosterone so that's what i'm focused on right now yes trying to balance that out and then my cortisol showed and this was interesting because i thought having high cortisol would mean that I am a stressed individual, but Mm -hmm. I essentially was making none. Okay. And (laughs) my naturopath was like, you're so stressed all day. That it took it all out and you're at low cortisol, adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Been there with the no estrogen and the no cortisol. Stop. Feels awful. Okay. I'm surprised that you can keep such a busy lifestyle. I think (laughs) because, here's the thing she said, I think because I'm so healthy, other than that i eat i eat really clean i exercise i was kind of able to make up for it but like there's definitely things that you know my skin things i've noticed that i'm like what am i doing wrong Mm -hmm. and then i have the answers now yeah what do i do next like Like, literally those two little things that like if you're not testing your cortisol or your hormone levels you can try everything else for energy for skin nothing's gonna going to connect yeah um the thing of low cortisol is you get there after you're just high for too long so it's like you definitely were high for some time and then your body just gives up and crashes um what i'm curious what your doctor or your naturopath is suggesting for for low estrogen so initially we're gonna take licorice supplements Mm -hmm. and cortisol management Okay. But I was yeah. curious what you would recommend, like food, lifestyle, anything. I'll take all of it. Yeah. Honestly, I think working on cortisol for any single human living in this world is needed. I don't think there's like a single person who's just like got it unless they live in a really <laughs> far away place. I don't know. Switzerland. <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> I, you know, it really starts to... It's really focusing on the basics and getting back to that. And that's something I think we've really drifted far from, especially when we're like focused on living a healthy lifestyle, we can forget the basics and supplements are so great. And I think, you know, that's so individual. The main basics though are that I would suggest to anyone nutrition wise is more protein at every meal, especially, especially breakfast, Mm -hmm. especially with just that low, your cortisol is highest in the morning as a woman. And where I'm speaking to right now, this is for women, people who identify as a woman. And yeah, because things tested with men, it's different. Um, so high protein breakfast, we should be eating it because our cortisol is highest in the morning. If we're not eating breakfast, we're letting it get higher and higher and higher. Then there will just be this big crash and roller coaster. So high protein breakfast, morning sun, so important. Regulates our HPA access. It also lowers our cortisol. It boosts our serotonin, helps I regulate love, our mood. Love that you said that. Will help us sleep better at night, which we know what sleep does. So more protein in breakfast, morning sun. And then this is obviously, you know, n- more of something that we're now just experiencing in the past few years. But with all of the electronics and the blue light and the constant stimulation, our body is living kind of in this fight or flight but it doesn't know because it thinks we're experiencing what we're watching which is just like this weird thing right like we don't realize it because this is so new but we need more disconnection from that in order for our body to like be grounded and safe because when you're just i mean obviously i love tiktok i'm on it way too much but when you're just watching all of this stimulation and listening to things and never taking a moment to be grounded your body thinks you're experiencing what you're watching and listening to. 
and then it's like tense and tight and it puts you in fight or flight and you can't heal when you're in fight or flight that's such a valid point and something that's such an issue right now yeah two questions about what you just said what is your ideal breakfast that's high in protein okay recently because i do well with dairy so that's actually not something i always did well with by the way i probably did like eight years without it but for me it's the easiest way to get high protein in without protein powders because i don't always i love protein powders but not every day my stomach's just not always so greek yogurt cottage cheese like a cup of that and you get like 20 grams of protein Mm. easy way for me to sneak in protein um i think that's also because i don't do well with eggs but if you do do well with eggs a few eggs turkey bacon regular bacon i personally have seen with other people and myself that animal protein in the morning works best with me um i also love chia pudding chia pudding coke i've seen you do you do like full pack coconut milk but question for you yes Yes, i yes i do love it love the fats love the fats um how do i get more protein in my chia pudding i personally add collagen in it the Mm. collagen peptides Um, great idea I've done protein powders in it too. I like how collagen just kind of like mixes in it because it doesn't make it as thick as some protein powders. Okay, and for anyone listening, we do have collagen peptides at Bloom and I feel like the unflavored one or the vanilla would be perfect in a chia pudding. Yeah, I love like a flavored one in there. Okay, cool. Um, So I do protein powder in there, collagen, hemp seeds. But yeah, it on its own, chia pudding on its own, like if I did it with almond milk, not going to keep me well when i do it with coconut milk it gives that little boost because now you have the healthy fats but then i do coconut milk and collagen or protein good for hours okay and then how do you go about setting boundaries oh sorry (laughs) (laughs) that was kind of sexy i'm not gonna lie okay (laughs) <laughs> how do you go about setting boundaries with your phone like do you have any guidelines or like rules that the listeners can try yeah honestly this is a newer thing for me because i'm like i'm great at giving advice i'm not taking it so this really was not like an awakening but i had like an aha moment when i got my screen time a few months ago like popped up what it was tell us what it was please. i don't want to <laughs> I really want to hear. Do you know what yours is or no? I do. It was really freaking bad recently. I just don't understand how it was that. What? It was nine hours. Okay, mine was like eight and a half. Okay, and it was like a few weeks of nine hours. I'm like, I just don't get it. But you also work on your phone. I work on my phone. But yeah, I work on my phone. So it can kind of validate some of it. Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm like, but at a certain point... Yeah. We should be able to condense the work into an hour or two on the phone. Right. And then what am I doing for the additional six? Right. I'm like, okay, I'm sleeping for like <laughs> eight of those hours and I'm on the phone for nine. Like what? I have like three hours do- that I'm driving or showering. Like what are those hours that I'm not on it? So it was kind of this thing where I had this aha moment and then it had me kind of thinking about discipline and like where I'm disciplined in my life. And I was like, honestly, I'm not. (laughs) Like, full transparency, I live alone, I work for myself, like, where do I have discipline? And I'm like, if I'm gonna start somewhere, it's gonna be this. And I have um, the thing on your phone where like you can stop TikTok, or like it will let you know once you've spent like a certain amount of time on an app. Do you know that? Can you, how do I do that? It's on your settings. Okay. I I can show you yeah yeah or like explain it because well i don't know how to explain it like without looking (laughs) yeah let's see pull it out let's see see. because i have the i have the nighttime thing that turns the app off but then it gives me the option to ignore it and i often will just ignore it so you (sighs) okay let's see i'm confused oh okay daily (gasps) i'm not good (laughs) we don't look at mine wasn't far off okay but also here's the thing recently i've been falling asleep to youtube meditations Mm. that are like six hours Yep. So I'm like, I think that's counting that. Okay. So basically you go to your settings, you go to screen time, and then you go to app limits. And then you can add limits for like, you'll go to social, then you can add limits like for TikTok. I just took it off to put it on. And then like, what I've been trying to do is an hour and a half on TikTok. Nice. And then it will tell you once you hit that limit. And I've had these limits on before where I'm like, okay, cool. And then I just like keep doing it. 
But where I'm holding discipline to myself right now is when that comes up, I'm done. Wow. I'm done. So I try to do that with TikTok and Instagram. And those are really where I spend my time. Um, And then also my morning walk. That's my like joy time. The past many months, I've been getting back to my emails on my morning walk and just going through TikTok and editing my videos. Feels very like productive. But no, if I'm going on my morning walk, phone away. And if I can't focus, I listen to a walking meditation. Like if I need some type of stimulation. So that's where I've been starting. The app limits and the, yeah. Well, I think that's huge because that's going to have an impact on your entire day. You know, it's not just that moment. You're going to be so much more mindful leading into your entire day. You're going to be more productive. Why are these things so important for hormones? It's, I know, I honestly, these things I almost feel are more important for hormones than even like food sometimes the state that our body is in it controls everything you can be eating the perfect diet exercising the perfect amount but if you're consume like if you're in that fight or flight state like how i explained what these stimulation things can do to us if you're in an unhealthy relationship if you all of that it goes back to our cortisol our adrenal glands our body not feeling safe and when our body doesn't feel safe or grounded all it's doing is putting all its work into trying to just keep your body running Mm. rather than letting it repair 100 percent, and i i would assume that sleep is a huge part of that too right huge part of it and people don't realize how screens or stress or bad relationships affect our sleep even if you're sleeping at night any Any sleep tips for better sleep hygiene overall, hormone health when it comes to sleep? Yeah. Sleep, so important. It's another thing, like, I need... It's not like my sleep's perfect by any means, but I know how important it is. Certain supplements, um, there's a supplement from the brand Array. They have a sleep supplement with certain herbs in it that, honestly, I swear by Mm -hmm. so much. I've been trying, it's not happening every night, but to keep my phone out of my room because it's easy to just start scrolling and then you're all of a sudden an hour in and then you're like, wait, it's midnight. (laughs) Trying to do that. And then something that's really helped me is keeping my room at 68 degrees because I like to fall asleep warm, but then I wake up like four or five times throughout the night with like hot sweats. Mm. So I'm really trying to, like that's helped so much for me, just not falling asleep, but just staying asleep. Um, And then I try to fall asleep too. And this is when my phone's in my room. Meditations. It can just like put me to sleep and stops my mind from doing its own thing and like has something to focus on that takes me down. The 68 degrees I think is key. I do the same thing. I feel like that moment where you're about to get into bed and you're kind of uncomfortable and Mm -hmm. a little too cold is perfect. Perfect. Because then you're going to warm up when you're in the covers. You do. You know, you'll get there. You toss and turn. You get heated up. Yeah. Exactly. And then I think red light bulbs are huge. Yes. Very calming. Do you have those in your bedroom? I do. I put them in my lamps. So smart. And it's kind of a vibe. Like, it's very relaxing with the blue light glasses on. (laughs) No, I look like a psychopath when I I go to bed. I love that so much. I look like I'm, like, in a club. I need to get those for, yeah, my room. I have a little just, like, red light. It's, like, just, like, a light bulb, but then it's in this little thing that I can just, like, shine on my face. I got it from Amazon. I honestly don't know, like, about all the rays or, like, how it is compared to some of the really great ones, but... Yeah. I try to just like shine it on my face, shine it on my thyroid. <laughs> like, Wait, how do you shine on your thyroid? What does that mean? Basically, you know, red light it can lower inflammation. Mm-hmm. It, amazing. When I put it on your, or not when I, but they say, doctors have tested, when you put red light like over your thyroid gland, which is in the middle of your throat, it can lower your TPO antibodies, which basically is something that you have too much or too little of when you struggle with thyroid problems. And it can lower the inflammation in your thyroid. Okay. Even just five minutes of that every single day has been shown to majorly support thyroid levels. Speaking of thyroid, we yes. had a lot of questions about thyroid. What does having a dysfunctional thyroid look like symptoms yes. wise? So there's hypothyroid and that's when you get more towards Hashimoto's. And then there's hyperthyroid, which is too much of the thyroid hormone. Okay. Hypothyroid is more common. That is when 
yeah, you're not producing enough thyroid hormone and your thyroid's what's responsible for your metabolism, your energy, your digestion, how you feel. Um, were you asking symptoms? Yes, symptoms for both, I guess. So that's when I'd really say, like, you know how you're supposed to feel. And if you're feeling like I'm doing everything right, why am I just like not in my body? And why is the laxatives not working and the B vitamins not helping my energy? Why aren't any of these working? Probably your thyroid or your hormones. Mm. For hyperthyroid, you're producing too much. And that's when you have really fast heartbeats. It's really hard to keep on weight. You're very anxious and get more anxiety prone rather than Hashimoto's. You're more depression prone. Um, it's crazy really how it affects mood and mental health when you look at those studies as well. Um, and then the other thing with hyperthyroid is that leans more towards Graves' disease and like really like big eyeballs is <laughs> it's like one of the ways that you can physically see it on someone. Like when their eyeballs are just kind of like, they look like they've been up for like four nights in a row and they're just zombies. Mm. You're leaning more towards hyper hyperthyroid. Is it genetic or is it something that you can cause over time? It's both. So from my personal story, my sister has it, my mom, my grandma. We're all affected so differently. My grandma barely feels it. My sister, like my sister's not even on medication. It's I'm on so much. <laughs> like it's so different, but definitely has to be genetic if we all have it. Um, and it is. But a lot of other people, they can get it through excess stress, mm. through lifestyle, through like I've heard this a little bit and not to get in it too much but all of the chemicals and toxins we're exposed to now it does have impact on our thyroid gland um, and pesticides and all of that so the amount of people that have Hashimoto's now compared to 20 years ago is a crazy number I don't know the stat and I need to remember it because I tell people this all the time but I remember when I was reading it blown away wow I'm like we can't say that the lifestyle that has just started in the past 20 years isn't affecting our thyroid then clearly yeah and i want to point out i guess for anyone listening who follows me or knows my story i'm definitely someone who's super health conscious i work out a ton i went through a big weight loss journey and i have issues with my thyroid now okay. i have low thyroid numbers and i was told you know it's probably better to get on a thyroid armor mm -hmm. is thyroid armor natural it's not it's not natural but it's not not natural okay if that makes sense yeah it is the more natural route to go as far as thyroid medication because it's basically giving you thyroid from excess sources it's kind of hard to explain i think it's from pig yeah. thyroid <laughs> say, yeah love that yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that's what i take to, okay. to help my thyroid okay and it did make a big difference honestly because i felt like i was working myself into the ground mm -hmm. and i think it's largely because i was maybe over exercising for a while i do yeah. have chronic stress so you can be as you said checking all the boxes when it comes to health but still having these issues absolutely i actually think it's really interesting because not saying that the people who are health conscious are more prone to this not true at all because we all have our we all have our thing but what i can say as far as this is just like a self-observed study me my friends obviously i live in la near erwan near all the gyms my friends who are and this was me killing ourselves at the gym you know trying the like very long fasting and not like doing too much ended up in a big crash for almost all of us and a lot of my friends thyroids have slowed down because of doing too much or because of not eating enough or because of whatever and I think it is interesting the people who and it's probably like the people listening to this podcast as well like the people who are into this less can be more mm. it, it's like I'm really seeing that because it takes a while to recover after you get to that point of low cortisol of low thyroid you don't just snap back it takes your body a while to recover and that's what i love about your content i feel like you promote kind of taking a step back when you need to like i love yeah. the fact that you're like embrace the stillness do slower workouts sometimes because that's kind of what our bodies need at different yeah. phases absolutely our, we're not supposed to do the same thing every single day for 30 days when our body goes through extreme changes in energy and mood and how hard it's working can't have the same day every day 
Why do you think so many women are having hormonal issues nowadays? I think it will go to some of the things we talked about as far as stress, obviously. You're not really supposed to, our body's trying to keep us safe. And if you're under a ton of stress, it's not gonna want you to have a pregnancy, right? Like that's when your body is super safe. So when you're under a ton of stress and stress doesn't just mean emotional stress, stress can be from over-exercising, stress can be from living in a toxic environment, from living near mold, whatever, stress can be so many things. Um, and then again, going to the toxins, toxins from plastics, pesticides, there's huge correlation with that affecting our estrogen and estrogen dominance. Um, things that we were exposed to or things that we weren't exposed to back then that are newer now. I, and then I think birth control, it's given, it's given a little too easily. I'm not anti-birth control. I'm, let's be realistic here, but I am kind of anti, let's give birth control as a band-aid to fix acne when you're 15 you know yeah and when you're getting put on this at anywhere from like 13 to 16 and you're going to stay on it till you're 26 27 28 not meant to be on it for 10 years and I think that's causing some problems for people as well major I'm yeah. seeing so many women come off birth control and me personally I haven't had my period back for six months yeah. after stopping because my body's confused so confused and no one ever you know the doctors prescribing this medication don't speak about the implications that may happen later on when we do want to have kids they don't not at all are there any good alternatives to regular birth control like what what should people do I think I think there's different ways to look at it. So if you're going on birth control for, and what most people I feel like at 15, 16 are going on it for is the, I'm bloated, I have acne. I, if you're going on it for symptoms, I would just say don't because there's obviously a root cause. And when you do get off of it eventually, all those are gonna come back up. So if you're going on it for symptoms, for acne, for headaches, for your PMS, look to a root cause and get your hormone levels tested, likely estrogen dominance, or a testosterone issue, tons of things you can do with that as far as supplements, nutrition, acupuncture. To prevent pregnancy, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Going back to the old fashioned way, it's you can really track your cycle. That's like obviously one thing and learn the days to not have sex. Truthfully, you can't get pregnant every single day of the month. So it's really learning about your cycle and the days that you can, that you can't, and being extra protective around that period of time where it's like a little more iffy. Um, you can, what I've seen as far as birth control is, it's not, don't psych yourself out on being it on it if it's for a short period of time. Like it can serve its purpose. The copper IUD seems to be if you're really wanting to go on birth control the better option as far as what our body can handle but also it's so individual where I have some friends who had really bad responses with the copper IUD it's going to be such an individual journey but you have to choose if it's the path you want to go down if so like put a, a few year limit on it otherwise really learning your cycle and doing what they did for thousands of years before I know you just did a January hormone challenge where yes. you gave weekly kind of assignments for people to try to heal their hormones. Yes. For anyone who wants to heal their hormones naturally, like what are some of the tips you can give us right off the bat? The first thing would be what we've talked about as far as cortisol today and those little tips of that. Can't have healthy hormones with wacky cortisol. So things we talked about earlier as far as that goes, um, as far as, I, yeah, with that hormone challenge, I gave just little, like the littlest things. And I got so many messages at the end of the month of people so surprised how much better they were feeling from like really like having a smoothie for a snack with like certain ingredients and having more protein and sun and doing a meditation. Um, what were some of the little, the little things we can try? The little things would be, like I'll just some of the things that I put in there was like do a yoga class once a week <laughs> mm. have breakfast within an hour of waking up 
try that even when you're not hungry just try it for a week and just see how your body feels um walk in the morning without your phone (laughs) um not just protein at breakfast i really think everyone will be feeling better if they have protein at every meal because having blood sugar spikes and drops does put a lot of stress on our hormones um like honestly it's the things that oh another thing is you can be eating the healthiest meal in front of you but you might not be absorbing it if you're eating it in a stressed state so something that i tell a lot of people is take like 10 good deep breaths before eating Mm -hmm. you need to separate from your whole day otherwise you're not even absorbing the nutrients fully your body's just like taking it and leaving it you want to absorb the nutrients and then also chewing more i gotta chew more i saw you said that why does that help not only does it can help two different things helps our digestion because we produce digestive enzymes in our saliva I don't know many girls who don't have digestion issues right now or complain about bloating after eating, but that's really just going to break down the food for you. Like you have to do no work. Your enzymes are doing that for you. But then also it goes back to the absorption. Nutrients from food, from supplements, whatever. It's one thing to take them, but your body might not be absorbing it. And those are the things that help support us. All the vitamins, the minerals, the protein. That's what can help heal hormones and help them not only nourish, but feel safe. But there's no point if you're not absorbing it and chewing helps you absorb it because again, it's helping you break down. Your fo- your body's not breaking things down when you're just eating in a stressed out state. Even when you think you're not stressed, you're stressed. You need to separate. Such a good reminder. I am like a salad shover. I will just funnel that thing into my mouth and I think what you said about also taking deep breaths and making it a moment and putting it on a plate and sitting Mm -hmm. down so crucial so crucial and no one would think that helps your hormones Mm. like when you look into what it does for your digestion and what your digestion does for your hormones and what nutrients do it really does I think I also saw you recommend blueberries yes blueberries superfood okay I actually saw that on your TikTok and I've been putting blueberries in my every breakfast amazing every day I don't say superfood often, and blueberries are a superfood. And then another tip you had was no plastic. Yes, which is hard. It mm-hmm. really is when everything really is in plastic, but we can do the best we can when we're at home. Um, we can't control outside of our life, and I think stressing about what's outside that we don't have control over adds more stress. It does the opposite. But in our house, you have your Stanley cup right there. <laughs> like, have your your metal water bottle never microwave things on a plastic plate or microwave in plastic tupperware replace all of that with glass when you do get takeout food you know especially if it's warm and it's put in plastic some of the plastic can be seeping into your food and personally this is like a big thing for me because i was not cautious of that at all most of my life growing up super high levels of bpa and plastics in my blood and urine test when I did it and that was one of the reasons that my estrogen was so messed up (gasps) yeah so it's like a big thing for me (laughs) no way Um, and our body knows how to detox it out on its own it's like you don't need to totally worry about it that's our liver's job obviously supporting our liver is going to help but it can't heal if it's constantly being exposed so it's really replacing all of that stuff and like even my cleaning supplies i do branch basics like natural cleaner but they have a glass bottle i'm like i'm just gonna put it in that Mm. you know that's key crazy you you just like think to trust what's out there right and you think like if it's being put in plastic like it's fine then how then how is it hurting so many people's bodies especially in our homes i think Mm -hmm. being mindful of the products we're using because we're breathing that in all day all day and then when you're out and about grabbing a glass bottle instead of the plastic i think is a great a great Mm -hmm. point do you have any feelings on candles yes okay personally i'm like the i love candles and like what it does for my sanity but i'm also very sensitive like my doctor explained to me as like I could just be like a mold test or like a sensitivity test like I could go in a room and as soon as I get a headache I'll be like something's wrong here yeah I get awful headaches from fragrances awful same awful but it kills me because I love candles 
Um, I don't know the name of this one brand, but there's a brand and it's so pricey. You can get it on Amazon. I'll send it to That's you. That's like all can, natural? All natural. Hmm. And it is like so worth the splurge for me. But fragrances, again, like you think you can trust it, right? Whatever's out there. Unfortunately, it, it's been shown not only like you can feel it, but what it's doing inside your body and really has an impact on your estrogen as well. The girls on the Bloom team, I walk into the office and they all grab Yankee candles lit no, with like no, no. cotton candy flavor. And I'm like, you guys are going to die. Yeah, gonna, Blow out are. your candles. I'm confiscating them mm-hmm. for their well-being. Yes, it's uh, for their well-being. I don't want them breathing in crap. No, I'm the same. When I go to my parents' house and they have candles, I'm like, I'm doing this for you guys. And I throw them out. <laughs> like, it's sad though, because people will send gifts with like crazy scented candles. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, such a nice thought, but... I have to remove this from my but no. entire vicinity right yeah. now. No, it's I'm the same. When I go to my parents, it's I take I confiscate their candles. I bring <laughs> my own um, laundry detergent and I really try to get them to use it. They just like the smell of their own and like whatever. But I wash my own stuff in the natural stuff because again, the blankets and the pillowcases that you sleep on, like mm. you're not most people are not putting the connection that any of that is getting to us. And like, I really wish that it wasn't, you know? But yeah. unfortunately it is. Do you know what brand you use detergent wise? Uh, yes. Is it seven generation? Yes, ch- okay. I use seven generation. Okay. And like, we're not looking for perfect. We're looking for better. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we don't need to be perfect. Our body is strong. We do have a liver. Like let's do what we can to just make it better think of ourselves as a bucket and like our buckets already 75% full just because of the life we're living and where we live and whatever that other like 25% don't fill it up on your own you know what I mean mm-hmm. like do what you can to like keep the bucket minimized let's talk cycle syncing yes <laughs> okay I have my sheet here of the four phases I'm honestly embarrassed about how little I know about cycle syncing and I know this is a big topic of yours on TikTok in your yeah. content it's kind of what you're known for yeah what is cycle syncing cycle syncing is living in alignment with your cycle we have four phases in our cycle and our hormones rise and drop like very drastically throughout the month and it's doing certain nutritional lifestyle changes that can help not make your hormones not move at all but to help stabilize that a little bit because every rise and drop of our hormones correlate to symptoms and that's when we don't feel like ourselves one week and feel too much like ourselves another week and all of that and it's really helping doing these little lifestyle changes to minimize all of yeah all the changes that happen throughout the month so every week you're living a bit differently when you can like okay the, the big thing with it is yes, but don't put stress on like being perfect with it because it does the opposite. So can I just start from the top? Start Men- from the top. Menstrual phase, how are we living? Menstrual phase, that's when you're bleeding. That's when, <laughs> Woo! Woo, woo. honestly, <laughs> once you lose your period, which like I know you did, I have too, it be- finally becomes a blessing, which like you will never think that it would, but that's your body's shedding a lot. This is a time to not push itself to its extreme this is a time to like let it go and when it's letting everything go you can kind of take it like like mentally too and like let everything go in your life and focus on the shedding of the past and like what you want to drop because the next well we'll go into a little more but yoga pilates walking more mindfulness this is a time to really like journal and focus on yourself and like write things to let things go you're bleeding some more iron in your food, more warming foods, because warming foods can help not only our blood flow, which can help with cramps, it can all, it's easier to digest, Um, hot Epsom salt baths, Mm. magnesium supplements, those are all things for your menstrual phase. Let your body just like let go. Okay. That's self-care week. Love that self care week. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, follicular phase. That is when you're gonna start to feel like yourself again. That's when your energy levels are gonna rise a little bit because your estrogen's rising, and estrogen correlates with energy, 
like confidence even so that's when it's going to start to come back the beginning of your so your ovulatory phase falls into your, your follicular phase so you can kind of think of it as one um when you get to your ovulatory phase though that's when like you really you're like that one like those few days of the month where you're just like crushing it you're likely in your ovulatory phase is that when you look better too? yes you look better weird things happen with your pheromones where you're you attract more people like you're living single ladies uh-huh. go go out during your ovulatory go out during phase. your ovulatory phase if you can plan it like plan your date for ovulatory <laughs> phase week like days um foods to focus on then is your estrogen is a little bit higher so to make it not be a huge like swing and drop once you get to your luteal phase foods that really support your liver because your liver is what takes out your ss estrogen so leafy greens this is when you have way more fiber chia seeds flax seeds way more salads i say during your follicular phase a salad a day um and then this like i said you're gonna have more energy you're actually able to store muscle easier during these two weeks or during these two phases push yourself that's when you like really go to the hit class and pick up a little higher set of weights and you know that you can push yourself because your body's wanting you to and it's going to be supporting your body um yeah fiber push yourself plan your date nights you're going to be feeling creative write down all the ideas that you have because your body's like really working with you at this time Okay, so sounds like those are our two favorite phases. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, do I say this luteal phase or luteal? Luteal phase. Luteal phase, okay. So that is the longest phase that we have. The, but again, all of our phases are different. Like some people have a 28 day cycle, 35. It's gonna obviously be different for everyone. So we can't say exact days, but the beginning of this phase, you're slowly tapering off of that like great high that we just had. Um, in your ovulatory phase, you can still be pushing yourself, but you'll slow it down. You'll start to slow it down because at the end of your luteal phase, that's when PMS occurs. And that's the week before your period. So your estrogen's dropping again, your progesterone's dropping, your hormones are getting so low. And when we don't have hormones, our energy is low. So we're preparing for the big letting go and shedding again. So the like five days, six you'll feel it like as soon as you start feeling that just like tiredness almost and wanting to be relaxed that's when you know that it's the time to start preparing yourself for the menstrual phase again and that's when you start going back into yoga pilates walking strength training's fine but it's not the time to like you know pick up an extra 30 pounds and just kill yourself Um, and then you'll start wanting to focus on the warming foods again but really large focus on magnesium because when your progesterone levels aren't perfect, you store a lot more water weight and magnesium can help kind of counter that. Um, It can also help you go to the bathroom, which a lot of people don't do (laughs) like right before their period, you have one or the other. Um, Thinking if there's any red leaf tea is really great, raspberry tea is great, and then dandelion root tea is great. Awesome. And then, and then it starts over again. So it's really, I like to say, our body knows what to do, but we're just so programmed to live every day the same. And starting a few months of like purposely trying some of these tweaks will help your body reconnect to what it already knows. And then your body's just gonna give you signals like, hey, I have energy, let's do this. Hey, can we take a little, a little slower? And why am I craving chocolate? To, like, you can just lean into it basically yeah i really like that concept of being able to kind of mix things up and and listen to our bodies and adjust accordingly yeah what tips do you have during these phases for any like bloating or mood swings or anything like that yeah our our hormones really do affect all of that i'd say so obviously every phase is different i feel my best in the ovulatory phase some people maybe don't i think most people have their most <clears throat> most people have the most digestion issues in the luteal beginning of menstrual phase. And as I mentioned, magnesium, that's going to help a lot. You kind of fall like one of two ways. Um, magnesium, charcoal, charcoal away from 
other supplements because it can kind of bind to supplements, but it's also going to bind to whatever is not making you feel well. So those as far as supplements, the Epsom salt baths, because that sends blood flow to your crowns, can release all the tightness, keep things going. Um, more fiber, but don't go crazy with it at first like taper it up and then digestive enzymes mm. with it i think can be super helpful for people who struggle with bloating probiotics you know the eating whole real foods also at the end of the day yeah is gonna give your body and when your body is craving something severely like if it is craving dark chocolate it likely is for the iron and magnesium like listen to your cravings because your cravings are probably telling you what nutrient you need to help fix what you're feeling makes a lot of sense so the bloom greens probably are the best to take during the luteal phase i would assume yeah because they have digestive enzymes and probiotics oh 100 but i also feel like they'd be good with your ovulatory phase if it's like Mm. because greens are great during that phase yeah so they're good for any phase is what you're saying (laughs) pretty great for any phase if i do say so (laughs) what is the way what is the best way to keep track of our phases they're honestly nowadays are just apps that do it for you so i have the flow app you do have to pay for it uh i think it's maybe five dollars a month but i love it because you just like say i started my period the day you start your period and then it's gonna say you're in your luteal phase you're in your follicular phase it just tells you for you um you can also track it on a calendar and that's like how we did it before smartphones but every cycle is different you'll start to get the hang of it as soon as your menstrual cycle's done as soon as it's done you're right into the follicular phase you're in that like if you want to guess in your head until you feel about or you're in it until you're like feeling like that crazy push you're ovulating and then as soon as you feel that drop of energy the bloating come on you're in your luteal and then you can just like write it on the calendar when you feel that way and track it that way but I think an app's easier. I see you have the Aura Ring. I do. You don't have two of them, do you? No, I don't. Okay, you just have one. Just one. Okay. I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's extreme. I know. <laughs> so do you use your Aura Ring at all? I do. Especially to track sleep has given such great insight. But do you use it for menstrual <clears throat> tracking? Oh, so I got this in, um, in November and... I honestly keep forgetting like the one of the main reasons I got it is because it works with natural cycles and tracks your I honestly am just not in the habit of like doing it but it does track it like I always go and put it in the app um, and I check my temperature it's so crazy but I'll need to check in with you in a few months once I like yeah really actually start using that feature because that really is the main reason I got it I know I haven't used it either I just use it for sleep for the most yeah, part that's what I use it for but I'm like I it's know. such great insight to yeah to what our body's going through yeah let's both do it and then we'll yeah. touch base yeah see how it goes we'll do it so i think it's incredible that you are so passionate about sharing when it comes to hormone health you're a young woman i think yeah. there's not a lot of young people talking yeah. about this from personal experience and also you have a certification mm-hmm. you clearly understand what's happening here do you feel like women are starting to have a better understanding of their own hormone health or do you feel like there's still a gap i do really feel like people are starting to have a better understanding and i think that's one of the best things of social media it's really hard to hit such a wide audience with information and because tiktok can hit someone you know thousands of miles away it's so easy to share information and get things talked about and i think hopefully I mean, I didn't learn about the four phases of the cycle, honestly, until I became certified, (laughs) which I think is crazy because I think you should learn that in health class when you're learning about like puberty, you know? So I'm really hoping that as it's being talked about now and talked about on podcasts and social media and going viral in some places, schools start to pick up on it and families start to pick up on it. And it can be part of just the education of your body that you're learning about as a young girl. Let's do a quick community Q&A. We okay. can do a quick fire version. Okay. Ear one hot food bar faves. Salmon, brown rice balls, Japanese oh. sweet potatoes. Oh, uh, yeah. My husband loves those. Okay. <laughs> I'm a carrots gal. Um, tips for PCOS was a big one. Oh, I'm sure. So many people have PCOS. 
Um, low intensity movement, work on your thyroid health, high protein breakfast, and honestly, like everyone has it so different. Um, blood sugar balance, like not just high protein breakfast, high protein and fiber during every meal. Great tips. Thoughts on intermittent fasting? Personally, if you are, um, if you're a woman through her, I'd say if you're a woman up until age like 40, 45, probably not the best for you. It's been studied on men or older women. Um, the one, the studies that have like positive benefits, but when you're in your fertility years, no. Pal- <laughs> Pilates or weightlifting? Both. I think both. Both. Yeah. I think Pilates works the small muscles, like weights work the bigger ones. You got to do both. I agree. I'm a fan of doing weightlifting like three to four times a week and then Mm -hmm. throwing in a Pilates sesh on like a relaxed day. Yes. Mm, Best exercise when you feel like you have high cortisol. That's a time to focus on the lower impact movement and not and realize that it's not forever. When you're healing a certain thing, it's not like this needs to be forever, but it's less hit because hit raises cortisol and just take it as a period of time to walk, do yoga, Pilates, lift weights, but just don't do the hit with it. Love it. Okay, now it's time for the question we ask every guest. I started this podcast because I believe everyone's pursuit of wellness looks different. What does wellness mean to you? Wellness to me means having your body mind and spirit all content i'd say perfect (laughs) love it yes i would agree where can people find you and your healthy hormone recipes online yes um on instagram it's page.lindgren and on tiktok it's just page lindgren thank you Paige. this was amazing thank you this was so much fun